this unit, we're going to talk about frames of reference. And frames of reference is a very interesting piece of physics, and we're not going to go particularly in-depth into it, but it's actually one of the driving forces behind the concept of relativity. It's the idea that from different points of view, the same event in physics can look different ways. For instance, if you're in a car looking out, so this is you, and you pass a friend who's in a different car, and you're only five miles an hour faster. To you, it looks like your friend's standing still, and you're passing them. Now, to an observer standing on the sidewalk, it looks like you're both going really fast, and you're going slightly faster. So, as it turns out, from different points of view, whether it's your point of view or the observer's point of view, this same event appears to be happening in a different way. And this is really important, because so far in physics, we've talked about objects that are staying still and objects that are moving. But what does that really mean? If you're on the surface of the Earth, well... The Earth is spinning, so really the surface of the Earth is going thousands of miles an hour. So that's not really a useful definition of what's still. You could say still with respect to the surface of the Earth. And even if we say that, the Earth's going around the Sun really fast. And the Sun's actually traveling around the rim of our galaxy. And our galaxy's traveling towards a different galaxy. And these galaxies are expanding away from the center of the universe. And very, very quickly it becomes very, very complicated. So we define something called a frame of reference. And in a frame of reference, we pick something to be stationary. And a lot of times, this is going to be the ground. So if this is the ground, and this is you walking along the ground, we say you're moving, and the ground is stationary. Now it makes just as much sense to say that you're stationary, and the ground is moving backwards, but that gets confusing. So as a result, we almost always pick the ground as staying still. But there are times when this doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's say, you're, let's say you're up in an airplane, and you, throw, and you throw a bag of chips to one of your friends. You're tossing the chips, and even if you throw it really fast, the chips probably aren't going much faster than 20, 30 miles an hour. But the thing is, they're inside an airplane that's maybe going 600 miles an hour, and that's their 20 miles an hour. So then the question becomes, combined, they seem like they're going 620 miles an hour. And a bag of chips going 620 miles an hour that hits your friend might injure him or even kill him. But clearly, when you throw the chips, they don't injure him. And why is that? Well, we pick the airplane as the stationary object in the frame of reference. So, as the, so the airplane's stationary, which means we're saying it's going zero miles an hour. That means the chip's going 20 miles an hour. Well, now, where does that 600 miles an hour go? We had something going 600 miles an hour, and now it's gone. Well, now if we look at the ground below, unless there's a person sitting, standing on the ground, we can't say they're stationary, because they're not going the same speed as the airplane, and we just said the airplane's stationary. So instead, they're going backwards at 600 miles an hour. And now suddenly, this makes a lot more sense. If you threw, say, a tennis ball at the observer on the ground, this tennis ball would be going 620 miles an hour relative to them, and would hit them really hard. Same reason why if you threw a rock out of a, out of a driving car, the rock would go flying forward much faster than you could throw it by hand. So as a result, we've defined a new frame of reference. We've picked something new to be stationary. And for most parts of this physics class, we're going to pick something called inertial frame of references. And that's a bit of a scary word, but all that means is there's no acceleration. Now you might ask, why is this important? Why do we care whether there's acceleration or not? And you might have noticed this if you ever tried to drink water while in a car. As long as the car is going in the same speed, right, velocity is constant, there's no acceleration then it's relatively easy to drink water. You don't spill all over yourself, and everything goes fine. But if the car is speeding up or slowing down as you try to drink water, you're going to end up spilling the water. And that's because in a non-inertial frame of reference, a frame of reference where there is acceleration, and this is important, because as you accelerate and as the car accelerates, not everything's connected, so not everything accelerates the same. So if the car accelerates, you're in your seat, you can't really go anywhere, so you accelerate also. Except the water doesn't accelerate, because it's in a cup and it's not really constrained. So as you accelerate and the car accelerates, the water doesn't accelerate until something stops it, in this case probably your face. So because the car is accelerating, the frame of reference is not inertial, and you've gotten a face full of water. So because of this, for most of physics, we'll be picking inertial reference frames. we are picking reference frames where everything's going the same speed, and when stuff is accelerating, it's accelerating within the frame of reference. So if you throw a ball to your friend, 
the ball is accelerating as you throw it. But it's accelerating within the reference frame. But the reference frame itself, the velocity is constant. And what a lot of times you see to mean constant, so anytime we use that, it just means constant. So as you throw the ball, it's accelerating, the frame of reference is not. Now, every once in a while, we'll pick non-inertial reference frames because we have to, but we'll talk more about that next lecture.